أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا اللهم ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد وصلي وسلم على المبعوث رحمة العالمين سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وعنا معهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد عباد الله in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. on every single person of us and not to let any one of us leave this place without full forgiveness Allahumma Ameen Today's khutbah, respected brothers and sisters in Iman and anyone who's listening or watching is about where is God from what's going on It's a continuous question Less than 48 hours I spent about 3 hours with an individual just explaining this question An individual who was about to leave Islam because of this question after a long journey with Islam. Less than six days ago, I spent around five hours speaking with a group of tens of people answering this question. <laughs> Why Allah is allowing such and such? Where is Allah from what's happening? All of kind of injustice, all of kind of miserable things that happens, poverty, killing, torture, problems by human beings or by natural things etc and the majority of those who are suffering on earth whether we like it or not they are Muslims <laughs> the majority I'm not saying just but the majority of poverty Muslims the majority of our tortured Muslims the majority of the lands which are seized occupied attacked bombed whatever just just name it most likely they are in Islamic countries or against Muslims, even in non-Islamic countries. So it's a, it's a valid question, by the way. 
I'm not saying this and no, 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 you have no right to ask. No, it is. And I did highlight, others did highlight, still we will keep doing what we, I call it, fixing possible misconceptions. Tasheeh mafahim. We need to know because this question always will be highlighted by someone around you. So please keep the following, inshallah. It's an attempt from your brother just to keep fixing the beauty of understanding this. It's a sophisticated, rich system. Is not able to see the brightness on his mobile or in his cell phone. Okay, this is a bad phone. No, Habibi, wait, wait. You need to do some certain things in these settings. No, I don't care. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, whatever. Uh, it's bad. No. The battery is bad. No, you need to reset your cell phone into the low saving battery. You take a decision if you don't want the electricity to disappear from your mobile. If you decided to let everything on top function 24 seven in your cell phone, the battery will last just a few hours. So it's, you, it's your decision. The system allows you to keep everything open. And the system tells you, you have the freedom to save your battery. If you decide, if you don't know how to use the mobile, it's not the problem of Steve Jobs or Apple or Microsoft. It's the problem of me that I'm ignorant about how to use my cell phone. <laughs> In a very simple way. Today I'm standing before your respected selves just to try to give a new answer, an addition to the idea, where is Allah? <laughs> From all of these things that's happening. Now, this question, to be honest with you, in my personal experience, reminds me with a joke. Someone, he was sincerely, from the bottom of his heart, asking Allah to give him a son and a daughter. Crying deeply. Someone next to him, he said, Yalla, مش تتجوز الأول? He said, hey, please, <laughs> go and get married first. <laughs> So he's insisting to have a child, but he did not think Aslan to spend the time to find a wife. But Sheikh, is it true or not that Allah is able to do everything? Yes, but this is miracles for prophets, not for you and me. <laughs> he was able to let Isa alayhi salam to exist without a father. And he's able to bring the she camel out of the rock. Yes. It's his decision, his business as a miracle for prophets and messengers. But you and me, we are under law. So we need to know what is the law that we are living within. The law says, if I want a child, first step, go and get married. <laughs> if I kept insisting, Ya Allah, why I do not have a family? Without even thinking to have a wife. It means I have a big, big, big problem. Me, not the system. By the way, this is, this is the core point of the khutbah. <laughs> so before asking Allah to give you children, please go and get married. But now, next step. Any wife? No. You have to choose carefully. Or otherwise, your kids might be the reason for your disaster in your life. If the mother is not good, consequently, Kids will not be good. The same thing applicable to sisters. If you just you want a family without having a husband, <laughs> it's impossible. You are not Maryam alayhi salam and we are out of the time of miracles now. Khalas. <laughs> but, but please choose the right husband. So in light of this meaning, let me just remind myself I'm a respected brother and sisters. One of the things, by the way, we have tens of answers, tens of areas because it's the system that Allah is ruling the universe with. It's not just for simple individual like myself or yourself. It's a huge system, system of controlling life. So let's have an idea about the beauty of how Allah is controlling this life. One of them, which is the most well known, and I, I believe, I'm assuming none of you will forget it, the story of Musa alayhi salam and Al-Abd al-Salih or Al-Khadr alayhi salam. Just very quickly, Allah was giving a lesson to Musa. But the fact that this story was revealed in the Quran 
it was not just kept to be a lesson for Musa. It became a lesson for who? Everyone reads the Quran. Up to the day of judgment, which means it is a lesson for billions and billions and billions of people, including you and myself. Let's just a reminder. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not inventing a space rocket. <laughs> I'm just bringing a reminder for myself and your respected self. Now, you know, Musa alayhi salam, and we will take the message, the reminder by the end very quickly. Musa alayhi salam was asked by Allah to meet this righteous servant, Al Khadr. Both of them, they are prophets. Musa alayhi salam has a great status. He is Kalimullah, the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoke directly with. He's not any prophet and messenger from Uli al Azm. From the great high ranked prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَتِلْكَ الرُّسُلُ فَضَّلْنَا بَعْضُمْ عَلَىٰ Allah has decided to favor some of them upon others. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the top favored. Tablish, it's Allah's decision. Period. Full stop. Close the file. Khalas. Musa alayhi salam from those great prophets. Yet, he was in need for a lesson by Allah. <laughs> At the end, he's a creature. Makhluk. Allah was teaching him. Go to Al-Abd al-Salih. Type. A journey, you know the story. I will accompany you. You can't be patient. Don't ask me. Don't utter a single word in anything you see. Uh, and the end, you know, the ship, he damaged part of the ship. Then he killed the boy. Then he fixed the wall. Even though the people of the village, they were so mean, so stingy, so had nothing, nothing to do with any kind of ethics. They rejected them. They did not feed them yet. He fixed the wall without having any kind of you know, price for that or being paid. Now the reply, let me quickly just read the reply for this, then highlight the first message in our khutbah about how do we understand how Allah is operating his universe and we are part of his universe. And what I see as bad or unacceptable or wrong or evil or it does not make sense, be careful. It's not necessarily what you see is true. <laughs> Because you and me are not controlling the universe. But you are controlling yourself surrounding area under your authority. So take care of what Allah is testing you in. So the first message, very quickly. As for the ship, I will read just in English. As for the ship, it belonged to some poor people working at sea. So I intended, I intended to damage it. Look, to damage. So there is an action of damage now. Kharaqaha. So superficially for us, it's an act of evil. <laughs> Wrong, unacceptable from one angle. Qal damaged it. For there was a tyrant king ahead of them who seizes every good ship by force. So sometimes Allah might allow something. You think it pure evil, but no, it's to prevent something much more bigger. You are not aware. One of the examples that I like personally, I invented this by myself, this example, just to make it easy, especially for the youth. If you took your child, seven, six, five years old, to the hospital by somehow to watch a surgery with an open body, blood outside, and your child has no previous idea at all how surgeries are made inside the theater. First time in his life, he was exposed to a person. We know that he is the expert, but for your son, there is a man holding a knife, opening the body of someone else, and the blood comes outside. So according to his knowledge, this man is a criminal. <laughs> and the poor person who is unable to defend himself, lost his conscience, is bleeding. So there is a criminal. So if your son, went outside screaming, speaking with the media. There is a big criminal. He's killing the people inside. He's opening their bills with his knife. I wallahi saw him by his eyes. He is the criminal. All children will agree with you, children. Anyone who has knowledge, he will laugh. <laughs> I say, oh my God, how naive your son is. <laughs> So this difference between ladina ya'lamun wal ladina children don't know what happens inside so on the social media will give your son likes yes 
That's true. Let's fight criminals. Let's fight criminals against this hospital. Yes, that's what will happen. This is the social media. They will agree with your son. And your son on TikTok and Instagram will have millions in hours. On a false, stupid, idiot idea. <laughs> Simply because he's ignorant. He has no idea. So if someone taught him what happens inside, he will laugh at himself when he discovers that the one who is laying in the theater, losing his conscious, is waiting since eight months for this operation, and he has already paid $100,000. He was begging the doctor to do this operation to remove the rumor, the tumor from his body, and he was saved from life-threatening life-threatening thing and when he wakes up he will go and he will hug and kiss the one who was opening his body bleeding which is the experts of the doctor or the surgeon this needs knowledge when we are lacking the knowledge we will have misjudgment against Allah's decision so let's be careful especially I'm speaking on the great scale big things why of these things very complicated are you part of this problem or not? If you are part, fix yourself. If you are not part of it and you don't know what is the wisdom, be careful. Why Allah is allowing? There's a lot of things that are happening. Some of them are punished. Some of them Allah decided, This is the channel of being martyrs. But how? Excuse me, not your business and my business. It's Allah's way. <laughs> but why Allah is not punishing this? In the right time, Allah decides, as some people they say, حينما يكتمل المشهد When the full scene accomplished, like when we see a movie film, okay? So if you just, if once you open the movie, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلَ الْأَعْلَى You saw someone chasing uh, something, okay? In five, uh, the film is two hours. At the beginning of the film, five minutes, you saw a criminal, for example, or a thief, who's trying to hit someone, immediately said, this is the man, خلصوا عليه and finish the film. I mean, you don't know what will happen next. Wait. <laughs> Still wait to see the end of the film. <laughs> but I can't. Yes, you can't. So don't judge. Take care of yourself and what you control. This is number one. And as for the boy, his parents were believers and we feared he would overwhelm them with transgression and denial. So we wanted their Lord to replace him with someone of better purity and nearer to mercy. But not to be misunderstood. This is a prophet commanded by Allah with another prophet. This is not accepted by anyone. This is a pure knowledge of the divine knowledge. No one is allowed to say, well, I, I want to get rid of this because I want to save. This is not your right. But Allah is telling us because simply Allah could have taken the soul of this boy simply by a virus or simply without any reason. He went to sleep. He passed away. That's it. The story is finished. Allah decided to do it in this way for a purpose to send us a message. So Allah has, has he might be drawn in while he was swimming. And that's it. <laughs> Ah, car accident. They didn't have cars. Horse accident. <laughs> Anything could happen. Why? When was Allah? You ask the question. Are you part of the problem? Have you participated in the problem? Can, have you been able to fix the problem? Have you been able to prevent the problem? If yes, yes, please, please do your best to do it. Otherwise, completely out of your control, just to say, Allahumma raddina bi qadaik and give me the knowledge to understand part of the wisdom of what you are doing. Okay? Now another, another message under this big law. It's something we call it Sunnah al-Tadafu'a. Sunnah al-Tadafu'a. وَلَوْلَا دَفْعُ اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْضَهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ لَفَسَدَةِ الْأَرْضُ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ ذُو فَضْلٍ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Tadafu'a means when Allah is pushing or repelling a group against the power of other group. Okay? This is Tadafa. Allah allows a group to repel or to push the power or the might of other group for his own reasons by something maybe we can't comprehend. Had Allah not repelled a group of people by the might of another 
by, a might of an, by the might of another, corruption would have domained the earth. But Allah is gracious to all. In another verse, الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم بغير حق إلا أن يقولوا ربنا الله ولولا دفع الله الناس بعضهم ببعض لهدمت صوامع وبيع وصلوات ومساجد يذكر فيها اسم الله كثيرة ولا ينصرن الله من ينصره إن الله لقوي عزيز they are those who have been expelled from their homes for no reason other than proclaiming our Lord is Allah which is part of 80 or 70 percent that we are witnessing now from Muslims like Syria on top the biggest clear example is Syria the biggest black and white issue no one can dispute about it so our Lord is Allah had Allah not repelled the aggression of some people by means of others destruction would have surely claimed Monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques in which Allah's name is often mentioned. Allah will certainly help those who stand up for him. There is a duty. So it's part of the test. This, this pushes me to a bigger law, which is the law of test and trial. He is the one who created life and death to put you into test. I am tested. By the way, Allah could have done millions of things just immediately. A bad, evil person, when he's even about to do it, he's able to stop him. Definitely he's able. He allows him to use his power in a wrong way and he will be deserving to be the hellfire. The point is, had Allah given me, generally speaking, means tools, abilities, capabilities to defend myself, yes, no. If he gave me and I simply was lazy and sleeping, I am part of the problem. So Allah will not defend me. I will be punished. Let me give you a simple example. Just to know that we need to work. We need to prepare ourselves. If you saw an evil person holding a knife about to kill small innocent girl, He's approaching, he's about to do it. You have the full ability to stop him. You did not stop him. You are a partner in the crime. From Sharia point of view, you are a partner. You are part of it because you were given. It's not my problem. No, 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 no. Islam, there is nothing such as it's not my problem. It is your problem. Because it's part of a duty on earth to stop evil. It's part of a duty. By the way, we have no choice but to stop evil. It is a compulsory act. It's a simple example. If you have, you have to stop it. When Allah will forgive you, when you are completely overwhelmed and have no power at all. Next question, why Allah allowed this to happen? This is another story, not your business. Are you, are you part of the crime by going to sleep or not doing any action? Are you preparing yourself? Part of I might be partner in the crime one of the aggressions that's happening against people on earth, on top of them Muslims, their children about to be kidnapped. True or false? Like, if the majority of us, their priority is just to have a better style of life, more houses, better cars, more vacations, more travel, more entertainment, and the 90% of those who go to vacations and they spend millions, they don't think even to build an extra 10 Islamic schools every year. They are part of the crime. They are part of the crime, yes. Because someone is telling you, you just count to five to 10 years, your kids are mine. Your kids are mine. You are just the biological father. You just produce them biologically. You feed them, you give them a drink. Their hearts, their minds, their personality is for me. You know that. And you insist that there is no need to support the community to build Islamic schools, for example. You are part of the crime. I'm sorry to say it, but we are part, if we can. The question, can we? <laughs> I will leave the answer to many of us. 
thousands of us, they have houses cost millions. So yes, you can, we can. But do we have the concern? Are we thinking in this way? Are we able just to pay attention that we will be held responsible? Whereas Allah waits, Allah is testing you. What are you gonna do? Then Allah will interfere supporting you when you lose all kind of possible means and tools. But after he has equipped you and me with the ability and I'm simply refusing to use them, Allah will not support me. Actually, I will be punished. <laughs> we need to understand the law. It's part of the law. I'm sorry to say it. Part of, and I, I, please, I beg your pardon, especially our brothers from Syria, not to misunderstand me or from Iraq, because I will say something out of politics, not from political point of view. I will say it from social, faith-based point of view. Go back 50, 60 years ago to Syria and Iraq. Hezbollah Ba'ath was based on Marxism. Marxism means denying the existence of Allah and fighting Allah. Both parties in Syria and Iraq, they were fighting Allah. But practically, how many millions they were members in uh, Al Ba'ath Party? They were millions or not? Millions. Regardless, two, three, four millions, we have about 20, 30 percent. They were members benefiting directly from a political party in Iraq and Syria, which is based on fighting Allah. But those, don't they deserve to be punished? I'm talking about the law of Allah now, but not about politics. I lived 20 years supporting a regime. He was killing Muslims. Do I deserve a, a punishment or not? Yes. yes. So this, this is the point. I'm not generalizing. But we need to understand, not just to take it emotionally. Do you think that Allah will support all of us just because we are Arabs or we are Syrians? But some of the Syrians, they deserve to be punished. Some of the Palestinians deserve to be punished. Some of the Jordanians deserve to be punished. We have a lot of corrupted people who are supporting tyrants, who are giving them. Go to the social media. When you want to, when you want to, to criticize a corrupted people of authority, you will find thousands of those people who are benefiting from the volume who are attacking you. But they are what? They are part of the volume action. When Allah decides to, to punish, they will be punished. They might be your cousin and your brother. So let's not be emotional when understanding the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why Allah is doing, this is part of the equation. I'm not saying this is the only thing. And please don't misquote me by saying the khatib says Allah is punishing this. No, no, no. I'm giving you the broader idea. When you think about what happens, think about what shortcomings we as nations we used to do against Allah as well. Because Hizb al-Ba'ath clearly is a Hizb that is fighting Allah. But we have our, my grandfather and my brother and my, they were. Okay, what is the law? In Allah yansurkum. But if you fight Allah, Allah will fight you. <laughs> and he might be sending part of an evil people to fight your evil. It could happen. But please, let's understand. If our priority is Allah, Allah should be always our priority. Not just depending on the political... Uh, problem or political status. This is the Qawaneen al kawn you know, Sunnah al kawni the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what confirms this, before I finish, ذَلِكَ وَلَوْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ لَنْ تَصَرَ مِنْهُمْ وَلَكِنْ لِيَبْلُوَ بَعْضَكُمْ بِبَعْضٍ If Allah had Allah willed, he himself could have inflicted punishment on them. But he does this only to test some of you by means of others. And those who are martyred in the cause of Allah, he will never render their deeds void. So imagine it in a simple way. Imagine that I live in Jordan. And I am the bad person who's doing all kind of evil thing. And I have four brothers, two of them. They were silent, doing nothing, even though they were able to do. But simply they kept silent to save themselves. Another two, one of them, he kept reminding me, but I did not listen. The other one, he did his best to stop me. And simply I tortured him. Then Allah decided to let a volcano flood whatever finishes us all 
For me, I'm going directly to Jahannam. For the two who kept silent, they are sinful because they were silent. <laughs> For the one who did his best, but he could not, he did his best. According to him, he will be rewarded. That one, he will be the highest level of torture, of martyrship. Shaheed al-A'la. Even though five of us, we lost our lives in one volcano or in one flood or in one bomb because of another country who wanted to seize our countries. So yes, five of us died, but accountability is not the same. <laughs> Sinful, great sin, forgiven, shaheed. Even though five of us, we lost our lives in one rocket. Just to make it simple to you. So don't judge Allah when you see, by the way, I'm not concluding this by, from my own mind. Prophet, and I, inshallah, I finish by this. Aisha radiallahu anha or Um Salama, wife of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, heard him saying, Yaghzu jayshun al Kaaba. An army at the end of the time will be invading Mecca from Muslims. The wife of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam asks, Ya Rasulullah, because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Yaghzu jayshun al Kaaba, Kal fa yuxafu bihim. They will be swallowed by earth. Earth will open and swallow them. Can you imagine? They will be swallowed. قال يغزو جيش الكعبة. فهز وايف سيد قال أيخسف بهم وفيهم الصالحون ومن ليس منهم يا رسول الله are they gonna be punished swallowed the whole army even though some of them they are not from them good nice righteous maybe they maybe they recite the Quran they are soldiers but they are humble they don't have the high level of politics of you know these things قال نعم تبيو يبعثون على نياتهم yes all of them, they will be swallowed. Yani, the law of Allah will not pick and choose. You are right, you are good, you stay there, you will be punished. No, all of them will go. Well, then they will be resurrected for the time of the accountability, Yom al-Hisab, according to their niyyah. Some of them will be from the Sab'i Dhulhum Allahu Fi Dhulih, and one of them will be with Abu Lahab, Wa Utbah, Wa Abu Jahl, Wa Fir'aun. This is the case in a very simple way. Before I make the dua, uh, your brother uh, who prays with us, uh, his niece, uh, passed away in Syria. Her name, Rahimallah, she's 23 years old. Her name is Kinda Asaf. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend his mercy. We are going to be able to forgive her, inshaAllah. We are going to be able to forgive her, inshaAllah. We are going to be able to forgive her, inshaAllah. We are going to be able to forgive her, inshaAllah. We are going to be able to forgive her, inshaAllah. Her um, uh, maternal uncle is with us, and he asked us if we can, inshallah, join their, you know, sadness by praying Salat al-Ghaib. So after we finish the dhuhr, uh, very quick we will pray, inshallah, Salat al-Ghaib in less than two minutes. Please jo you join. You don't know, she's so young still, 23 years. Allah yarhamha. And you don't know which one of us du'as will, inshallah, will help her in her grave. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma arhamna fawqa al-ardi wa tahta al-ardi wa man ardi alayka ya rabbal alameen. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt wa afina fi man afayt wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Wa barik allahumma lana fi ma a'tayt wa qina wa asraf anna sharra ma qadayt innaka taqdi bil haqqi wa la yuqda alayk. Wa innahu la ya'izzu man a'dayt wa la yadhillu man walayt. Tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayt. Falaka alhamdu ala ma an'amta bihi wa laka al-shukru ala ma awlayt. نستغفرك ربنا ونتوب إليك نؤمن بك ونتوكل عليك اللهم ارحمنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم العرض عليك يا كريم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة